Hello, I'm Matteo, the Chief Mobile Opinionist here at Tech Travel Geeks. And this is the Tech Travel Geeks setup video for the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10. This is a follow-up to our unboxing video where we went out of our way to actually take it out of its box and see what the hardware was like. So, what we're going to do today is actually set up the device. And the first thing we need to do is identify which side of the device the SIM tray is on. So in this case, it's on the left side of the device at the top. So it's the left side when you're looking at the screen of your Redmi Note 10. And let's look at what type of SIM tray we're presented with. So this is a Xiaomi Redmi Note 10 that I purchased on AliExpress. And as you can see, this is a great feature that Xiaomi has on some of their devices. This takes two SIM cards, so dual SIM, plus expansion of storage via micro SD. So what I'm going to do is take my micro SD card and pop that in its tray. The particular model I purchased has 64 gigabytes of storage built in. And what I'm doing now is going to put in an extra 64 gigabytes, as well as my two SIM cards. In this case, I'll be using one Libara SIM card and one Tesco mobile one, whoops. Two networks, uh, which are both MVNOs here in the UK, which provide a decent coverage in terms of data and minutes and texts. In this case of my, in the case of my Tesco mobile SIM card, that was ten pounds for eight gigabytes of data, as well as five thousand minutes and texts. And as we switch the screen on, you see the Redmi logo and the MIUI logo. This is a lovely AMOLED screen. Uh, this is a full HD plus. Uh, display. It's 1080 by 2400 pixels, so it's a 20 to 9 aspect ratio display. And it's pretty astounding that in this price range uh, you have the option of an AMOLED display of full high definition plus resolution. So we're going to start off with MIUI 12. MIUI is Xiaomi's Android distribution, and because I'm in the UK I'm going to choose United Kingdom English. And yes, I am in the United Kingdom, that's fantastic. And I am going to use Gboard, which is the Google keyboard as default. And there's all the usual details about user agreement and privacy policy. I agree to those, I trust Xiaomi with this. So I have two SIM cards here. A preferred data SIM card, I'm actually going to choose my Tesco one and my preferred voice SIM card, I'm going to choose Tesco. Libara is just there as an extra, extra in this context. So here I'm going to set up my Wi-Fi. Bear with me. And that was the first time typing on the Redmi Note 10. And I have to say, I was pleasantly impressed by what the haptic feedback was like when typing there. By default, it has haptic feedback on, on the keyboard, and it was pretty, pretty good. So in this case, the setup, this is a Google thing for Android, offers to copy apps and data from another phone. I prefer to go through the setup as a new user. So let's see what that is like by not copying my data across. So it's going to go through and check details whilst we're at it. Now, I have the option to sign into my Google account, which I will do now. Okay, so I have signed into my Google account. It's now syncing some details with Google. And again, as I said, the haptic feedback for a device in the around about £150 price range is very, very good. It's not much at all. It actually feels decent. So good job there, Xiaomi, in getting the Redmi 10, uh, Redmi 10 ready with such a good haptic feedback engine. I'll probably switch it off. I prefer not having that, but uh, it is one of the better ones that I've 
seen recently in devices in this price range. Overall first impression of whilst typing and using the device, this is the first time I've actually done that, is that it's nice and light, yet it has that little bit of heft to it, that lovely shiny fingerprinty uh, back on the Redmi Note 10 is gives it some lightness but still uh, you get the feel that there is some heft probably due to that 5000 mill milliamp hour battery that the Redmi Note 10 has. So now all the different settings for Google I'm all okay with that and as you can see the screen is nice and clear nice and bright there's a nice little dot in the top there that's where the selfie camera is in this case it's a 13 megapixel sensor we'll need to put it through its paces in our full long-term review of the redmi note 10 but it looks like a nice little dot in the middle there so yes let's carry on with our setup and see what else we need to do i've logged into my google account there must be more here so yes, I'm going to go ahead and use Assistant. I have registered my voice in the past, so there should be no need to do that again. Let's see. Yes, it's all ready and set up because I have set it up multiple times on multiple devices. And I think we're done here. Uh, I don't need to add or change anything. The setup in this case, is less MIUI, it seems to be much more Google oriented. And now we're signing into my Google account for MIUI, and it seems to have already set itself up. That was very, very fast. Let's see what Xiaomi offer with their setup. So synchronizing. I will allow that for all the different options. So this is 10 services that will be synchronized. I'm actually going to switch off gallery because this is duplicating uh, Google's photos functionality and I have limited space in my Xiaomi storage. Uh, call history, recorder, Wi-Fi, browser, Bluetooth. Yeah, I think that's, that's all good. To activate sync, call history, sync, messages, I need to verify my account, but I'm using a different number, so this might take a, a while. Let's just skip that step. Set it up as a new device. Right then, so let's set up our fingerprint. This is a, a key feature of the Redmi Note 10. Before we do that, I need to set up a pattern. So the fingerprint scanner on the Redmi Note 10 is here on the side on the power button. And unlike the fingerprint scanner that we saw last year on the Poco X3 NFC and the Redmi Note 9S and other devices such as the Redmi 9, this is actually a raised button. It's not just a power button, but it looks like one. It doesn't have that sort of dent in the industrial design of the device. It's just there. So that was quite easy to set up the fingerprint for the first round. And so we've successfully added my thumb to there and we've now got a few extra settings to go. So we're going to allow uh, location, automatic system updates, personalized ads, and the user experience program. I'm okay with that. So Xiaomi now offer us uh, a launcher setup. Very specifically, this is, do you want a classic Xiaomi launcher without an app drawer or the version with the app drawer? And I'm going to go with the app drawer option. And there we have it. That's the Xiaomi MIUI 12 setup complete for the Redmi Note 10. That was pretty quick and painless. There was a few worrying error messages in the way, but they seem to have cleared out. And we're now ready to go. It's loading our apps. Now, 
Obviously, this is just the very initial setup. What I'm going to do now is walk you through what apps and services I'm going to be installing on the Redmi Note 10. And based on how I'm planning on using the device, mainly as a media player, as well as a smartphone, uh, whilst I'm out and about running, uh, this will be maybe interesting to you. But what we'll do is we'll go through it and I'll walk you through, I'll explain what I'm doing as we do this. Now, MIUI 12 is taking a while to load apps, which makes me think that this, in, in Xiaomi tradition, has quite a lot of bloatware on it. In my experience, most bloatware on Xiaomi devices is uninstallable, which is great. But initially, you need to put up with that. Uh, ultimately, that's one of the ways Xiaomi makes money, is they sell slots on the device for pre-installing apps. So setup is complete. I can now go to my home screen. Here we have it. And you can see that we're now set up. It's a nice, vibrant, bright screen. And I don't have a left and a right pane in the launcher because I have an app drawer, but nothing's happening. So there's obviously a lot going on in the background. I'm assuming that Google Play is kicking in and starting to load apps, but that was quite a bit of choppiness in this, in this context. So there we are, I've just un uh, unlocked the device and things are working again. There was a bit too much going on there for the Mi Note 10. And that's not surprising. Um, as we can see, there is apps being downloaded in the Google Play Store. The Google Play Store itself is updating as we saw it uh, quietly open up and then close down there. Oh, interesting. I'm not actually getting the Play Store to react. I'm connected to a very good internet connection, but it was obviously updating itself before starting to update the apps. So is this the new version of the Play Store or the old one? Let's find out. It's the old one because I have the My Apps and Games in the background. And this is a great way to quickly see what apps are pre-installed through the Google Play Store on the Redmi Note 10. So we have all the usual Google apps, but then there's things like WPS Office, Amazon is pre-installed, the Xiaomi Mi Remote Controller for TVs. Now that's a really interesting app. It's very, very useful to me because in this case, the Redmi Note 10 has an infrared blaster. That means you can use your Redmi Note 10 to remote control televisions, air conditioning units, essentially anything with an infrared uh, receiver. So this is quite useful, especially when traveling. You don't want to necessarily always be touching those um, manky hotel remote controls, and you can just use your phone to do that. So eBay, I'll be uninstalling that, Google One, all the usual Google apps, as well as LinkedIn, oh dear. Please don't connect to me, I don't want to be part of many people's networks at this point in time. We also have Netflix, the Opera browser, and a few other apps. So whilst these go through with updating, you can see that the app drawer is already quite full and there's a few games as well. Oh look, there's the Agoda app. Uh, that's a travel app, very popular in Asia. We're mainly focused on hotels, but you can now purchase flights through them as well. So yes, quite a few apps, social apps as well, and TikTok. Very interesting, Facebook as well. So a lot of apps pre-installed there. Let's have a look at what the settings look like. So the settings, in MIUI 12 are very, very similar to what we've seen on other devices, including the Redmi 9, the Poco X3 NFC, the Poco M3. So everything's there. By base, as it comes out of the box, 21 gigabytes of the 64 are used in terms of storage. And we'll just see what the representation is like here. So 15 gigabytes of that is the system that is required, so the operating system and all the little uh, Xiaomi extras. 
there is also almost three gigabytes being used by pre-installed apps and other whatever that is. But for now, that's not too bad. A third of the 64 gigabytes being used. It is Android 11, so the current version of Android, as well as MIUI 12.01. Now, Xiaomi recently teased the arrival of MIUI 12.5, which will further refine things and make them look better. Uh, but this is, this, is, uh, this is the current version of Android and the current version of MIUI, so I'm quite happy with that. There may be an update, and this is the first time I'm checking, but no, there are no updates for MIUI 12 stable on this device. So pre-installed apps are there. We have the Google app drawer on the left, but let's go into the Play Store and see where we are with updates. So it's still installing quite a few of them. I will keep the Amazon app because I use that quite a lot. We'll probably skip that. We'll keep Facebook messages, that's another thing I noticed. The default app for calling is the Google phone app, the Google one. The default app for SMS or text messages is Google Messages, which I'm totally fine with. So in this case, I've got eight gigabytes of data from Tesco. Tesco just confirming that my new SIM card is set up. But let's go into settings and just ensure that RCS is set up. Auto download M MMS, yes. Wireless adjust. So send SMS to all recipients. Okay, so it's got group messaging. Now let's just check that chat features are unavailable for this device, so no RCS features for uh, the Google messaging app by default here. It may be that this device is so new that it hasn't been approved by Google for RCS features, or we're just updating messages now. It may be as much or as little as having the messages app updated to the latest version. Let's give it a moment to finish updating that. So it's installing messages. And then we'll go through and look at the apps that I really want to have on my device. So there we are, we've updated messages. Let's look at the settings. General preview of chat features. So it's unavailable for this device. That's quite interesting. So no RCS for me. Right, let's go into the Google Play Store and start looking at things that I do require on my phone. So Twitter. I'll definitely be installing that. Instagram. Telegram. My favorite messaging app. I will also use Messenger because they have got a few friends who still use that. Okay, so that should do for now. Now let's think about some media apps. Audible. First one that comes to mind. My favorite audiobook service. And my next one is my Pocket Casts. This is my favorite podcast client, which is really, really good. It helps me synchronize across devices and platforms, and I can leave off on one phone, pick up on another, and more importantly, also do the same through the web client, which I use when I'm sitting at my desk. So that's now installing. Um, I will also use Amazon Music because I do enjoy some of the cheesy playlists and radio stations they provide. Uh, Alexa, obviously. Shh, I said her name. Don't tell on me. And I think that's the key ones I wanted. So mainly my music player, podcast player, and what I'll do now is maybe 
bunch some of them together. So Audible and Pocket Casts can go together for spoken audio. Another one that I do use quite a lot is YouTube Music. So I'll put that there and have a separate folder for music. So I've got YouTube Music and Amazon Prime Music. Uh, let's put the messaging apps together. So message, messages, Telegram, Messenger. And I'll no doubt be adding more, but this folder can go. Oops in the dock next to my phone one. I'll remove Chrome from the dock and start putting my social channels in there. So I've got Twitter and Instagram, and I'll probably be putting in Facebook and LinkedIn. Now, it might be annoying to some that there's so many pre-installed apps before you've actually chosen what to install. But the good news is that if you don't want an app like eBay, you can remove that and it gets removed. But it doesn't actually get uninstalled because you need to go into... Does it? Oh, it has been. That was good. Let's just make sure. eBay. No, it is there. So that's not very good. So in all apps, C, D, E. So I've got eBay in the app drawer. Let's try uninstalling this. Yes, you need to be in the app drawer to uninstall an app. And I'll probably try the same with Dust Set or a game I'm unlikely to play. And another one. So there are a few games pre-installed that need to be updated on the system, like Tile Fun. WPS Office, I won't use because I use Google Drive apps. What else here? PUBG Mobile. So that's something I might actually spend some time playing. Do let us know in the comments if you think you would like to see a gameplay video of me playing PUBG or Call of Duty Mobile or Goat Simulator here on the Redmi Note 10. So I think that's most of the apps I wanted uninstalled, uninstalled. I've got my social folder, I'll just put that in the bottom, and that's how I like having my dock on Android. So phone, messaging, social channels, camera. Those are my most used apps. So we'll see how we're getting on now in the updates. There's still a lot of updates to go. I'll start that off now. And whilst that's installing in the background, one thing we'll do is have a look at what sort of wallpapers are pre-installed on the Redmi Note 10. So there's quite a few online ones available, and some of them do make the best use of that AMOLED screen, such as this moon one. A moonshot, if you will. I've selected that wallpaper. Oh, what happened there? Let's try that again. This hasn't been the most straightforward of setups here. I've had a few crashes as I went and have had to restart some actions. Now, where is that wallpaper that we saw? <laughs> so we need to go and search for them online. But ideally, I'd have liked that moon one. So there's pre-installed wallpapers, some very nice ones here. Aerial views. There's a nice one of Mars. Let's pick that one. So I'm going to apply that to both. There we go. And the added advantage of this wallpaper is because it's black, it uses less power. It should give you some slightly better battery life. But as you can see, it also hides that dotch in the top. Because it's black all round and it's an AMOLED screen, you don't notice that the dotch is there. So all these apps are installing. As you can see, by default, in this case, you have light mode or bright mode. I'm going to go into, in this case, into the display settings and change that to dark mode. I prefer dark mode. 
and you can also choose the color scheme here. In this case, it's automatic. It adjusts your colors based on the current lighting, but you can make colors pop a little bit more by using saturated. And it does make a difference, but I think I'll just leave it as standard for now. And there we have, the display should be now in dark mode, as you can see from not only the settings menu, but the actual drop downs are now gray and dark. And the actual settings drawer is now nice and dark. So I'm all good with that. You can also, obviously this is a MIUI device, you can install and use themes if you already have some, or if you want to use ones from the theme store. There's plenty to choose from, but for now I'm fine with the default Xiaomi theme and the Google, in this case, the Google setup on the left. Oops, I triggered the assistant. So that's a good sign, it recognizes my voice. And in this case, I deserve that. So there we have it. I think that's pretty much my full setup done. For now, I think it's time to wrap up this video. My setup is pretty much complete. I have all the app, key apps I wanted installed. Uh, Google Play is now in the dark mode because we've set things up that way. And my apps are still updating in the background. So as you can see, LinkedIn's now downloading. All good there. So I think it's time to wrap up now. Uh, I will be taking this phone out running with me tomorrow when I start couch to 5k and I will be using it extensively as part of our long-term review of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 10. If you made it this far into the video, thank you for putting up with me, for listening. If you have any questions, if you think you would like to give us some feedback, please do leave a comment in the section below. If you like this video, why not like it? But most importantly, if you're not already subscribed to the Tech Travel Geeks here on YouTube, please do subscribe. It really does make a difference to us. And if you have that notification bell on, you'll be notified whenever we have an upcoming video or a released video of consumer electronics, gadgets, or things that we may think make the travel experience better. But for now, thank you for watching and goodbye from me. Thank you.